Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start off with a prayer this morning. If you can bow your heads and pray with me. Lord God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for putting the breath in our bodies, God. Lord God, we just pray that you will continue to bless each and every one of us through this screen, Lord God, and in the flesh in this building, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask that you will be with us this week, Lord God. Be with us the week after, Lord God. Each and every day, Lord God. Just stay with us and keep your loving arms around us, Lord God, and protect us, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Y'all know this song. Y'all can put y'all hands together. Y'all can stand up and praise with us.
Father, you have more and more for us, oh God. God, we want the more. Hallelujah. We just want to be closer to you, God. Hallelujah. There's nothing like being your presence, Lord. And we just want to be in your presence today, God. Hallelujah.
Come on, we can do better than that. Let's offer God a praise in this place. Come on, I didn't say me. I say offer God a praise in this place. Come on, can you give God the highest praise? Do I got any witnesses know that God is worthy to be praised? Come on, look up towards heaven with a loud voice and shout hallelujah. Do I got any witnesses that's not ashamed to shout glory? How many know that God is worthy to be praised? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same sun, our God is worthy to be praised. Come on, why don't you lift both of your hands, look up towards heaven with a loud voice and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to our Father. Amen. Take your seats if you can, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Bible declares that we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Can you do me a favor? Can you just wave at somebody that's in the sanctuary and say, it's a good day, it's a good morning? Because this is a day that the Lord has allowed us to see. Amen. Truly our God is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same sun. There's a sweet spirit in this place. There's a sweet spirit that is saturating this place. Our God is worthy of the highest. He's worthy to be praised. Glory be to the Father. He's an awesome God. He's a way-making God. He's a God that we could trust. You can't make me doubt him. That's what them singers will say, because I know too much about him. Come on, wave at somebody and say, neighbor, I know too much about him. I know too much about him. 
and it ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Again, this is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible declared that we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to our house of worship. Well, we're excited about doing it the Lord's way, and we say please join us. As so many of you all have already done that, as together we enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit, the freedom of worship and experience together, the power of the priest, teach, and sung word. We don't believe it's by happenstance that you're sharing with us on this day. What I do believe that God ordered your steps and allowed you to be in worship on today, whether you're here with us physically or whether you're viewing us in our virtual sanctuary. I'm just going to say to God, be the glory for the great things that he has done, is doing, and will continue to do. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm happy because God woke me this morning. He started me on my way, closed me in my right mind. He put food on my table clothes on my back. Listen, listen. I heard that when praises go up, blessings come down. And I'm curious, is it anybody expecting God to do anything this week? Why don't you say, Jack, give me a moment. I just want a praise moment for myself. Why don't you take about 15 seconds and go ahead on and worship. Go ahead on and praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same sun. He's worthy. Somebody owe God a praise in this place. And he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. I'm thankful that he woke us this morning and started us on our way. I'm excited. And I am also encouraged. Amen. Because as I continue to remind people, it was last year about this time. Won't nobody sitting out there. But I'm thankful just to see bodies. Come on. Let, let me get it right. I'm thankful to see live bodies where you can testify, Tanya, that the blood is still running warm in my veins. Come on, we might got to be at a little social distance, but I believe somebody knows what it's like. It's one thing to watch it, but it's one thing to be in the experience. Do I got any witnesses that knows? It's one thing to watch it. But it's one thing to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It's one thing to look at, but it makes a whole lot of difference when you enter into his courts with praise. It, it makes a whole lot of difference when I can watch it. But it makes a difference if I didn't look at, into it and enjoy his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. Do I got a witness that's not ashamed to say, God is good, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, sit down if you can. Listen, I'm happy because, again, God has given us another day and another opportunity to be in worship. And I'm glad about it. I'm excited about it. We're still on a resurrection high. We because we know that on last Sunday we celebrated once again the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I still feel and I still feel the Romans and smell the aroma and still feel the presence of God on resurrection Sunday and so I'm excited about that again we welcome you we welcome you I'm excited I'm excited listen again it's so good to see so many familiar faces that are back amen thank you so much mother uh, Val Jean is in the house. Come on, give us some love. Amen. Mother Spencer is in the house. Come on, come on. My friend Linwood. Come on, I need everybody to look at Linwood. Amen, amen. I'm thankful. Tanya and Shorty Doo-Wop is in the house. Amen. Come on, give them some love. Sister Lillian Powers is in the house. Amen. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that as well. Amen. And so again, listen, I want to continue to encourage people to be and remain saved in this season. I want to continue to encourage people to remain sound in this season. But last but not least, I want to continue to encourage persons to stay safe in this season. Amen. And I'm so delighted and happy again to see the presence of people in the sanctuary. Uh, that we're practicing social distance. People have their masks on and things. Y'all look good. Amen. All the different masses. Amen. People being cute with their stuff on. Amen. And so, you know, it looking good. Miss, oh, shucks. Listen, one of our deaconess, Miss Bruce, she got a leper mask on. Go ahead on, girl. 
Don't start nothing, Miss Bro. Won't be nothing. Amen. Nevertheless, God is good. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. Again, we're thankful for all of this past week's participation and support in helping us here at First Church have a successful week. It has been a blessed week as we have had the opportunity to begin on last Sunday uh, a clinic we were responsible for as people of our church, along as we partnered with First Baptist Berkeley, Shallow, Gethsemane where Second Calvary hosted their second shot clinic. Some persons were able to receive first shots as well. But I'm excited about that because members of our congregation can say now as we are continuing to get fully vaccinated, amen, uh, to God be the glory as I so often say, amen, for those persons that may desire uh, a COVID-19 vaccination, uh, you can call our church office. You can let us know today. But I also want to remind you all, listen, I know that there's still some hesitation uh, with receiving the shot, and that's something totally uh, between you and God. I don't discourage or uh, no one, uh, even if I desire not to get the shot. I think that's very important because, again, it's a situation where uh, I've been sharing with people this whole season, trust God and trust the science as well. Amen. And so, again, uh, I want to remind somebody, Vincent, just because persons receive the vaccination, uh, don't mean that, that that gives them a ticket to go to heaven. Amen. Uh, you still got to live right on this side. Amen. And so, again, if that's your desire, uh, another one of our partnerships today as we are. Uh, partner Berkeley and Campus Stella uh, persons are going to be receiving uh, their second shot today uh, at First Baptist Berkeley and I'm thankful because so many of our congregants here at First Church are going over there but also we have been very instrumental people in our congregation with sending persons to that clinic as well and then we know on this coming Wednesday this coming Wednesday we will host our second shot clinic here at our church and if it's your desire to want to come out, volunteer if you can. Amen. I know on this Wednesday, we're responsible for about 400 people that's going to come and receive their second vaccination. And so we want to make sure that we're on target. We want to make sure that we're in position. So if you're not doing anything, you can come on out and share on this upcoming Wednesday as well. Again, I'm excited. I'm excited. On this past week, we had a great time on our prayer conference call, uh, a Bible study when it comes to dealing with forgiveness amen how many know that forgiveness is real i mean listen forgiveness is real and we thank god for jesus amen as he came to forgive us 2000 plus years later for all of our many sins and so again we say to god be the glory for the great things that he has done, is doing, and continuing to do. And I'm ex so excited about how First Baptist, along with other entities in our community, I dare not take credit, uh, First Baptist, we dare not take credit for everything, amen. But it's one thing to know that our church, our congregation, we have been in the fight, amen, to encourage persons to keep holding on, to keep trusting God, to keep being safe. And I think that's just something that you all should give God praise for, give God praise for. Amen. Amen. Listen, also as well, again, uh, we have several things that's going to be coming up. Amen. So be tentative. Uh, let's Listen, let's make sure that we are connected. Amen. And if you're not connected, I don't know what to tell you. Amen. But get connected. Stay connected. Amen. Because I'm excited to say that eyes have not seen nor have ears heard. Amen. But I do believe that, listen, there's some blessings that's stored up for us. And God is ready to release them for the glory of him. And so, again, we're excited. Listen, as we prepare our hearts and our minds, as I so often say, we want to make sure that we govern ourselves accordingly as we're about to enter into a period of giving. Amen. Uh, as we worship through giving. Amen. As we worship through giving, I want you to take the opportunity and take your time. Some persons have already given on our online Givelify app. Instructions are, are right there on our screens. Amen. Work As we worship through giving, if it's your desire, you can download the Givelify app. Amen. Amen. And you can download that, give, look for First Baptist Church Campus Stella, and you can uh, follow the instructions you give that way. If it's your desire, if you need an envelope, all you have to do is wave your hand. Amen. All you have to do is wave your hand. Uh, if you need an envelope, some of you all may have already gotten the envelope and you have stopped 
over in our fellowship hall and you already have given that way as well thank you so much in advance if you need one now all you have to do is wave your hand uh, one of our trustees will make sure you get that amen and it's also if your desire if you desire you to drop off you can do that as well you can do that as well uh, we're going to be here it's about the 1 30 hour as we are each sunday if not you can drop off uh, during the hours of our uh, office hours that's tuesday wednesday and on thursday uh, you can drop them off then you can mail them in as so many people do as well and uh last but not least amen uh, if you desire for somebody come and get it we'll come get it as well all you gotta do is let us know and so we say again uh, god loves a cheerful giver and you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. You can try, but you can't do it. Amen. Because he owns everything. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein. And so again, as we begin to pray, amen, I pray that you and God have had your time. Because again, giving is an act of worship. And here at First Church, we believe in paying our tithes as we declare that this is the year of recommitment spiritually mentally physically financially and relational and so again here at first church we want to recommit uh into paying our tithes giving our offering uh we know here at our church our benevolent ministry what that strives to do and establish and maintain a confidential uh, program of providing emotional and spiritual aid to those in our congregation and community our mission fund is sought off to be uh, to support local and foreign missions as well. Don't forget about our building fund that helps to maintain our grounds, our facility. And also, let's not forget about our Sunday school. Let's not forget about that as well. We know that is a foundational portion of our upbringing, amen, and as our continuous discipleship in the Lord. And so I'm going to pray, amen. We're going to give, amen. We're going to have a moment where we're going to just come and give. Uh, if those that desire to come, uh, some of you, again, have already given, amen. And so, again, let's pray. God, we thank you for all that you do as we so often say, God, Help me to be a blessing to your kingdom. I support the vision and visionary of First Baptist Church Campostella. We give you nothing from our pockets that did not come from our heart. God, we claim that we will not withhold the tithe. Therefore, we understand that the vowels are rebuked. The windows of heaven are opening our lives. I desire to be faithful, productive, fruitful, and committed to the advancement of God's kingdom here on earth. God, we declare even now because we are tithers. We understand that every generational curse that has run through our family, which has either brought sickness, disease, divorce, and addiction, which has held up <clears throat> or stopped our blessings, which has brought lack in our lives, we understand that it's now broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we are tired as we know we have more than enough. Because we are tithe as we know our fruits are not destroyed. Because we are tithers, we will bring forth our harvest in God's time and season. Because we are tithers, we know that all nations shall call us blessed. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, we declare that we are blessed. It is in your name we do pray. And together as one family, we say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, do me a favor. Wave at, wave at somebody. Wave at somebody and say it's good to see you. Do your part it's good to see you do your part amen again we're excited we're excited govern yourselves according listen our praise team is going to come back uh they're going to they're going to lift the name of jesus once again amen they in they they in their jeans and t-shirts and sneakers amen uh sister rose rose got on some yeezys today y'all amen she don't even know what they is your daughter got you when uh, uh, Yeezys, Kanye West shoes, amen. <laughs> Come on, give God praise as they're coming, amen. strong and mighty. Oh, come on, y'all need to, oh, anybody serve a God who's strong and mighty this morning? Come on, if you know we serve a God that's strong and mighty, I need you to help me sing this song of praise. Yeah. Strong and mighty. 
sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Sing, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
because he's yes, able this yes, morning yes, yes, we yes, praise him yes, because he's able yes, anybody know that God is able yes, to do it exceedingly to do abundantly above but all we can oh, ask or yes, thank yes, stand that same key yes. how many know that he's able if you know he's yes. able I need you to just lift your worship yes. wherever you are yes. and say oh
Lord with all thy heart and don't give up on don't him. Don't give up on God. Just remember that he's going to direct he your path. He's going to protect your family. You. He's going to get you that job you need. Don't give up don't on him. to just get you by, but he's able to do a seed of me. He's able to do above, beyond what your little mind can think of. Listen, somebody needs to be encouraged this morning and to know that God is able to keep you from falling. Listen, God is able to pay your bills. Listen, God is able to put food on the table. God is able to keep you in your perfect mind. God is able to give you strength. God is able to heal your body. God is able to deliver you. Listen, God is able. God is able. Somebody shout, God is able. to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God, I know that there have been times where we have thrown in a towel and the truth be told, we didn't gave up. Our praise team this just shared that we should not give up on God because you have never given up on us. And so, God, do what you do best. Just be God and be God all by yourself. What's in your name, God, we do pray. And together as one family, we say amen, amen. And amen. Do me a favor, offer God a praise one more time if you can. Again, truly, we're thankful for the presence of God's people that are present with us on today, those that are viewing us uh, in our virtual sanctuary. Again, we say to God be the glory for the great things that He has done, is doing, and continuing to do again. I am excited and delighted as well to again to just see uh, the presence of God and the favor that is on so many of your, your lives, amen, and I'm not just saying it to make you feel good, but as I've been saying all morning long, there's a sweet spirit in this place, and I believe that liberty is being set in the atmosphere, I believe that healing is being set in the atmosphere, I believe that a way is being made it's set in an atmosphere, amen, and truly, I do believe that it's totally up to you whether you desire to receive it, and all I'm going to tell you is receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, amen. Again, I'm always excited, you know, so many times in life we can allow people to be family, 
But it's one thing when you got family. I'm glad and I'm excited today to have my, uh, you know, my cousin with me. Amen. I don't really look at her as a cousin. That's like my sister. Amen. You know, when you when you first cousins, that's sisters and co that's sisters and brothers. Amen. And so, uh, my uh, my sister is in the house. Tanisha Hagens, come on, give us some love. Wave your hand. Amen. She's here. She called me yesterday and said, y'all open. I said, it just depends uh, which capacity acts in, amen. And I said, she said she was coming, amen. She has a friend with her, amen. Hey, Nick, she got lost in the hallway, amen. Uh, she, she said, I, I walked out the door. She was there. She said, ah. She looked at me like I was crazy, amen. She said, my friend and left me, amen. I said, well, if you're going in the sanctuary, you're probably going to find your friend. Amen. Nevertheless, God is good. I'm thankful for them traveling down. Amen. To share with us on this morning. Come on, give our praise team some love. Amen. They had the spirit of God with them on today. Amen. I may say, man, what you laughing at? Amen. They sound good today. Thank y'all so much. Maybe it's the Yeezys, Rose. Amen. Maybe it's the Yeezys. Amen. I don't know. Jonathan got on Yeezys too. Amen. But he got his from the flea market. Amen. Yeah, where you got him from? What you say, Rose? Don't tell nobody that, Rose. Hey, man, you go to First Baptist Camp of Stella, you know. We get you some shoes, Rose. Rose, Rose said they butter cookies. What is butter cookies? The ones you found on our eight in the basket did the cookies. Hey, man, nevertheless, God is good. Quickly, y'all meet me at John 20. I want to continue something that we started last week. And I'll, I think it's very, from, uh, the Lord pricked my heart on yesterday uh, when it comes to sharing this. John 20, meet me at verse 24. Amen. Meet me at verse 24. Whatever device you may have, whatever Bible uh, you may have brought with you, I promise you it all reads the same. But I do desire John 20, beginning at verse 24. I'm going to read from the contemporary English version of the Bible, but it, it all reads the same. John 20, uh, beginning at verse 24, it says this, although Thomas the twin was one of the 12 disciples, he was, he was not with the others when Jesus appeared to them. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. Thomas said this, first I must see the nail scars in his hands and touch them with my fingers. I must put my hand where the spear went and to his side. Other than that, I won't believe unless I do that. Let's bring it to this week. Verse 26 says, a week later, uh, the disciples were together again. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came in while the doors were still locked and stood in the middle of the group. He greeted his disciples, verse 27 says, and said to Thomas, put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hands into my side. Stop doubting and have faith. Thomas replied, you are my Lord and my God. Verse 29, Jesus said, Thomas, do you have faith because you have seen me? Because the people who have faith in me without seeing me are the ones who are really blessed. And verse 30 declares, Jesus worked many other miracles his disciples and not all of them are written in this book verse 31 says but these are written so that you will put your faith in Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God if you have faith in him you will have true life somebody say amen for the few moments that I'm allowed to share with you I'm going to talk from this thought that comes to mind I still believe I still, I still, I still believe. Wave at somebody that's in this sanctuary with us and say, neighbor, I don't care what you say. Come on, y'all, come on, don't be afraid to talk to nobody. Wave at somebody and say, neighbor, we in church now. And I don't care what you say, but I still believe, I still believe, I still believe. Listen, as I so often say, week in and week out, in order to become a better me, me has to deal with me, and until me deals with me, me will never be able to overcome me. 
I often like to say this, who knows you better than you? Do me a favor, wave at somebody and say, hmm, who knows you better than you? And I've said, y'all quiet. I don't want to preach hard. I'm going to preach long if y'all stay quiet. Come on, help me now. I have said before, it wasn't until I looked at myself in the mirror and saw that my biggest enemy, wave at your neighbor and say, it wasn't you, but it was me. If you were to be real honest, some of us, if not all of us, can still testify by saying, I've had some good days, I've had some bad days, but be honest right here, Mia, and tell somebody, but through it all, I'm still learning to trust in God. And I'd like to say that often because the truth of the matter is, it's one thing to know that you know that you know, but when hell or high water rises, you learn that you have come a long way, Crystal, but you still got a long ways to go. And that's why I often say, Jason, I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to trust in God. As I so often say week in and week out, that great poet writes, life ain't been no crystal staff. But as I so often say at the end of the day, I'm sure all of us can testify to you by saying God has been good to us. And he has been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Fre Frederick Douglass Wright, if there is no struggle, then there is no progress. Now that person, as I so often say, and we have used the theme year in and year out, preparing for the next in the matter of becoming a better me. Understand, I need y'all to begin to understand this, that there is a difference in preparing versus getting prepared. Because truth of the matter is, there are some of us that is prepared, and there are some of us that are still trying to get prepared. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want y'all, and I continue to remind you that it's okay to live again, learn again, laugh again, and love again. But I need us to understand that I do believe that after coming out of 2020 that God is calling us to the year of recommitment. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, and relational. Uh, listen, child of God, on last Sunday as we gathered together, we knew that it was the great resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And I'm thankful. Do I got any witnesses that's just thankful that God got out of that grave after three days? Come on, come on. It's Listen, last Sunday we shared because the truth of the matter is we all can declare that we got proof. Come on, help me if you will. We got proof because we know that he didn't leave a mess. That's what we said on last week. We, we got proof when he got out of that grave. He, he Listen, he folded, the Bible says, uh, Sister Val Jean, he folded up the napkin and put things back in perspective. Do I got a witness that's just thankful that he didn't leave you messed up? Come on, we all. Come on, we all. We all and had our show enough days and being messed up, jacked up. Let me just put a penny right here and remind somebody right along up in here ain't none of us perfect come on help me all of us come from the dirt all of us listen Job says that man of a woman is born of a few days zany and those days are full of trouble listen there will be a day cuz that all of us will have to fall down on bending knees Jason and confess our own sins this is what the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. I think it's very important in the seasons to come that we remind persons that ain't nobody perfect in the church. Come on, help me if you will. And I do need it to be understood that I believe in this season that we're preparing for Sister Lillian that God is looking for people that's not afraid to say I didn't been to hell but I came back. Come on, I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching because God ain't looking for no weak, phony Christians. That's not a shame to say I know what it's like to be high and show up at church. I know what it's like for God to look past all the hell I started, all the trials I didn't been. Come on, y'all don't get quiet right along like in there. I told you, church should never become Hollywood because there's some people that need to know that God, when he shows up he will not leave a mess say that on last week but we're thankful because God told us on last week and that's why we say we got proof because he showed the disciples his scars 
All right. I told y'all this on last week. Some people need to see. Come on. Some people need to see your, your battle scar. Some people need to see why you tatted that tattoo where you put it because it's a reminder of where you used to be, where you came from. And ain't you glad that God, listen, is not afraid to show us his scars? Come on. Y'all know on last week, they whooped him. They marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He didn't say a mumbling word so they hung him high they stretched him wide listen he didn't say nothing but but he said but it but once he did say some all he simply said was father forgive them for they know not what they do when he did say something he said today thou should be with me in paradise when he did say something he said mother behold thy son son behold thy mother when he did say something he he said to the father why has thou forsaken me when he did say something he says in spite of it all he wasn't physically thirsty because I so often say how could water ask for water so he wasn't physically thirsty but he was spiritually thirsty because he was still thirsty for righteousness he was still thirsty for redemption he was still thirsty for, for doing right and not wrong so when he did it say something no rose he says it is finished it is finished prophecy was finished because he said to me no man takes my life Miss Sproul but I lay it down and it was coming to be well time natural time met spiritual time and he finally declared once God in heaven gave him the signal where he can declare into thy hands not my hands because if it was my hand he, come on, help me if you will. I would have been gave up a long time ago. But he said, into thy hands... I commend my spirit. And it was with that I'm thankful that God wasn't afraid to show and by giving us proof by showing his scars. Again, I'm going to say it and I'm going to move on, but some people need to see your battle scars. Some people need to see or hear you declare about your testimony. Too many quiet folks in church. Jonathan, they got to know that you ain't just singing and stomping for no reason, but they know that Jonathan, you can test that you didn't had your good days, you didn't had your bad days, but there's no need to complain. Rose, they need to understand you ain't just singing the singing, but you're thankful that you didn't raise two children. Come on, help me if you will. They ain't cause you hell like some of these other kids. They need to know tear all the trial and tribulation being a beautiful young adult. They need to still know you ain't just singing to be singing. Come on, help me if you will, but they got to know without a shadow of a doubt that you're singing because it won't your pastor that woke you this morning. It was God that touched you with too many quiet folks sitting in church waiting on your song to be sung but the truth of the matter is if Rose and them don't never sing my song Chadwick, I got a song on the inside. Uh, come on, help me if you will. I need a witness that's not ashamed to say don't you make me tell my story. I dance all in your face you looking at come on I could take you come on can I just be honest if some of us was to take off some of this mascara come on help me if you will meet me when I wake up in the morning come on Crystal help me if you will because the truth of the matter is all of us got a story we could take so again, we got proof because he sold us a scar. But third and final, on last week I shared, well, we got proof because we saw our delivering Savior for ourselves. On last week, the 11 disciples that showed up saw Jesus for themselves. It's one thing when you see him for yourself, but it's a whole nother thing. Well, let me say it like this. It's one thing to hear somebody else testify for seeing him, but it's a whole nother thing when you see him, Dominique, for yourself. Do I got a witness that's not ashamed to say, Reverend, as I look back over my life, it was many a days I saw him for myself. Come on. I seen him when I I was doing whatever I was doing and he kept me some of the same stuff 
you did. Some people didn't die from, but for some strange reason, uh, you had your, oh, come on, you had your moment with God for yourself. And that's why this week, just like last week, you can testify still, I'm thankful that I saw him for myself. All right, that was last week. Let's get to the day. I promise you the day is only going to be five minutes and we'll bid you good evening. Five minutes in the Baptist church really means ten. I'm done. But understand, I still believe, because as we roll now, we see right there in verse 26, it was a week later, Jesus has already been resurrected from the grave. He then already showed the 11 disciples. Those 11 disciples then already hooked up with Thomas. And now they're known to be in a room. They're locked up. They were locked up because they were scared. They were scared. They just didn't understand. They didn't know what was going to take place. So now the 12 are together. Now the 11 are together now. And the Bible says that Thomas was with them this time. First thing I want us to understand, if you're going to declare this week that you still believe, number one, I want us to see and understand we still believe because because he showed up just for me. Y'all didn't get it. I thought I'd get a little shot. He showed up just for me. The Bible says in verse 26, Jonathan, a week later, the disciples were together again. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came in while the doors were still locked, and he stood in the middle of the group, and he greeted his disciples. Somebody should be happy that God showed up just for you. Can I just get real little funky right up in here? Ain't you thankful that he showed up in the midst of your doubting, in the midst of your depression, in the midst of your hell, in the midst of your trial? Or to have a witness that's not ashamed and say, let's take a commercial break because I got a praise that I got to get off. I'm thankful that he showed up just for me in the midst of my heartache, in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my, uh, did, come on, help me, in the midst of my discouragement. Our to have a witness that's not ashamed to say I'm thankful that he showed up just for me. I don't got nobody that really want to help me preach because I'm feeling right preaching. <sighs> help me if you will right here. But do I got a witness that's not afraid to testify you was just like Thomas. Come on you. Come on. You didn't expect that you was going to lose somebody. You was just like Thomas. You was wondering why COVID hit you. You was just like Thomas. Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. When you didn't have no money in your pocket you was trying to figure out how you was going to Peter to pay Paul to look out for Sally Mae. You didn't have a pot to piss in. Uh, that's right, I said it. Or a window to throw it out of. I need a witness that's not ashamed to say, but I'm thankful. A week later, come on, help me if you will, that God showed up in the midst of my trials, in the midst of my, come on, misery, in the midst of my tribulation. And all I can testify a week later is that amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me testify right here I once was lost but now I'm found understand or to have a witness that's not ashamed to say I'm thankful that he showed up in my mess I'm, I, I could testify that God then showed up in some of my mess too. Come on. I, I want you to know, your pastor, I ain't always crossed every T. I ain't always dotted every I. But I, I just got to throw this right here in this and let you know that were many days my cousin showed up for me. But it's one thing for her to show up, but it was a whole nother thing when Jesus showed up. Because can I be honest? God knows how to deliver you from your mess where, come on, where folks won't find out your mess. Come on, help me if you will. Come on, you ought to wave at somebody and say, you sitting there acting all cute, calm, and collector, but I'm going to praise God for you. I thank God that he showed up in your mess because you was messed up. You was toe up from the flow up. You didn't know whether you was coming or going. You didn't know how to, well, come on, you didn't come on. You didn't know how to cross your T's that needed crossing. You didn't know how to dot your eyes, but you thankful that he showed up in the mess. Mr. Young Mess. That's why I still believe. 
I still believe because he showed up just for me. But not only am I thankful and I still believe because he showed up just for me, but again, I'm thankful because I seen and touched his scars for myself. All right, y'all don't believe me. Verse 27 says, and once Jesus showed up in the middle of this group, he first says, Thomas, put your fingers right here. He says, put, put your hand right here. Come on. And then all of a sudden, Jesus says, look, stop doubting and have faith. All right, can I tell somebody in this season? I, I know it's been rough. I know this week we done lost DMX. Come on, help me if you will. And I know that was just like losing Kobe. I know this week a good friend of mine, she was ready to preach that morning, Crystal, and died that same evening. I want you to know this week so many of us have been hit with so much that can cause us to doubt God. But God is saying in this season, you better learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, I know I I know last week I said a good mentor of mine, Bishop Jeffrey Reeves in the Good Shepherd Baptist Church in Petersburg, Virginia. He said a few years ago, yes, there are some people that's walking by faith and not by sight robbing, but there are also some people, and that don't mean nothing bad, but there are also some people that needs to see faith. In other words, it's a doggone shame. Now, I ain't just talking about first church neither, but it's about to get tight round up in here, but it's a doggone shame that you had people before COVID that showed up to church every Sunday but now that we're in the midst of a pandemic we're trying to get hold up Rick I don't ready for the scratch yet but we gonna grab like we asked with dither. I need you to understand that there are some people that say they ain't coming back you got preachers that say they ain't coming back you got deacons and deaconess that say they ain't coming back you got members of the Lord church that said they ain't coming back and let me say this in order to get some people to come back they're gonna have to be some people that's willing to sacrifice because you know let me say it like this that only what you do for Christ is gonna last I ain't asking y'all to come back because I'm just want y'all to come back but I don't want nobody to come to church that don't want to be in the presence of God's church in the presence of God's people because what's going to happen is uh, that going to take the atmosphere but God is looking for the atmosphere uh, to have a sense of uh, liberty in it God uh, is going to look in the atmosphere and he needs there to be a sense of deliverance uh, in the atmosphere time out for the old church now I ain't saying nothing wrong with the old church but God had to release some people out of church so the real church church could have church. Y'all worried about if the pastor gonna have on a suit, whether he gonna have his shirt tucked in, whether he gonna have a suit on. Y'all worried about if the praise team gonna have choir robes on. Listen, if they do put on choir robes, all y'all gonna do is say they look crazy and hot, but the devil is a liar. Listen, you need to understand that God is looking for people that's not ashamed to step up in the midst of somebody else's hell. Say to God, I live and for God I die. Listen, I'm thankful that I was able to testify just like Thomas because once he touched his hands, once he touched the side, he says, Lord, I do believe. So I need you to understand. I need you to understand. I, I saw the scars for myself. I'm going to take this moment for myself. How can you say you saw Jesus' scars and you touched them for yourself? Y'all, I need y'all to get this. How, Reverend, can you say you saw Jesus' scars and you touched them for yourself? I'm going to get y'all this one right here. I seen him about two years ago on April 24th when I held my daughter in my hand for the first time. All I can say is can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Y'all still don't believe me? Let me go ahead on a little while longer. Come on, come on. You got to understand. 
I saw them for myself a year prior to that when I held my dead son in my hand and I still testified to the fact for God I live and for God I die. Y'all still don't believe me, do you? It was on last year about May 30th where I got a phone call. Come on, help me if you will. Saying my father is transitioning. All I can tell y'all is a year later my heart still might be a little heavy, but I still woke up this morning with heaven on my mind. Come on, help me if you will. Do I got a witness that's not ashamed to say, Reverend, I don't need to hear your testimony because I got a testimony all for myself. I see him for myself. trying to sweat this much. I'm trying to stay a little cute, but I don't worry about sweat no more because I don't wear that Beijing no more. I'm done right here. I understand. I still believe. Uh, I still believe Wanda because he showed up for me. Uh, come on, somebody should pat themselves on the chest and say, I still believe because he showed up just for me. I was Thomas. Come on, come on, y'all. I was Thomas. I was Thomas, but not only that, I still believe because I was able to see the I was able to see and touch the scars for myself. Somebody, see, see, the problem I have with church, everybody wanna be John. Huh? Everybody wanna be Peter. Majority of y'all are Peter, because some of y'all cuss like sales. And well, and y'all y'all know what else Peter did too. He cut somebody. Now everybody needs a Peter in their life. Huh? Peter knew how to cuss and fight. And some of y'all are rolling with people that don't know how to fight. I went out there. I gotta tell this testimony right quick. I went out there and said, "Y'all see." I told the young lady that's working the door, I, I told them the two trusty young adult ladies out there and the other one working the door. I said, you know, that, that was my cousin that just went in there and they said, okay, we got cousins too. <laughs> so, I said, they're my real cousins, my real cousins. They, they told me, they said, hey, and we have cousins too. <laughs> All right, so that let me know that they got some cousins that don't mind fighting. But again, 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 everybody <clears throat> want to be John or Peter or James, you know. Don't nobody want to be Judas. Now, some of you all have his spirit, but nobody want to be Judas. Nor does anybody want to be Thomas. But I want to testify and let somebody know I was Thomas. Because there were some days I, I, I just, I just, I had to see it. I, come on, I, I listen. Come on, can I? Can I be honest? I'm done. I promise you. But there are some days I do believe. I, I, I trust in the Lord, Jason, with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and I know Jonathan. He will, Rick, direct my path. But then there are some other days. This is what people don't like people to see. There are some other days where you and God, y'all ain't being cute, shorty. Y'all ain't in the room being cute, saying, "Oh God, I love you, man. I love you too, man." At the end of the day, there are some days I have conversations with God to say. Why in the world? You, I like you, sis. You need to come back next Sunday. Why in the world you will allow this to happen to me? All right, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, be honest. Y'all ain't got quiet over here. I feel more preachy over here. Do I got any witnesses that's not ashamed to say there are some days on this journey I question God. I question what he's doing. And there are some days I understand you gonna make a way. But there are some days I need to see the way be made. I, I, I need to see it for myself. There, there are some days I need this. I was Tom. Come on, y'all. But third and final, last but not least, if you're going to declare, you still believe again. You got to be thankful that he showed up for you. You got to be also thankful that he, you was able to see and touch the scars for yourself. But third and final, last but not least, I need you to know I still believe because my shout now is in my faith. All right. I know that wasn't something. Come on. It's going to just hook you right here. Listen. The Bible says in verse 28, he says, Jesus said, Thomas. 
being that you didn't touch them, being that you didn't stop doubting and have faith. Thomas, do you, he, he poses the question, and I got to pose this question to you all. Do you have faith because you've seen them? Because I need you to understand, Thomas is of the world. The people who have faith in me, this is Jesus talking, people that have faith in me without seeing me are the ones that's really blessed. Huh? In other words, Bible says, uh, in, in early parts of the script, it, it says, how can you say you love your brother or sister? How, how, can you, how, how can you say you love me and you ain't seen me? And, 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 I'm, and I'm just putting it in Jack, Jackson Gospel. How can y'all say y'all love me? Jesus is talking. And you ain't seen me but sit next to your brother and sister. Won't, 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 won't even speak to him. Come on, help me now. I'm done. Closing the Bible up. But I need you to understand. My shout is now in my faith. Because it says, Jesus, you got to understand. You, you got to understand that you are a blessed people to know that when you're walking by faith and not by sight, I want you to know I believe that better days are coming, but my faith gets lit every now and then to say better days are already here. All right, y'all didn't get it. No, 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 no y'all didn't get it, that was cute. I, <clears throat> I need you to know that faith knows that the, the storm will pass. But, but, when my, but when my faith is lit, come on, help me if you will, in spite of the rain, if you know it's going to rain, do I got any witnesses that's not afraid to say, I got my umbrella though? All right, y'all still didn't get it. Y'all still didn't get it. <clears throat> my, my faith, my faith, my faith says at the end of the day, uh, listen, storm clouds may roll and the winds may blow, but understand when my faith is lit, uh, I can declare my soul is anchored in the Lord. <laughs> Come on, help me if you will. I, I need somebody to say my shout now is in my faith <laughs> because I need somebody to understand and, uh, listen, you, you, a week later, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. And I need a witness that's not ashamed to help me close this little message by waving at somebody and saying, uh, from here on out, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I know there's going to be some days that it's going to be harder than other days, but my Hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood. Have I got one witness and his righteousness? I need somebody that's not ashamed to help me testify. Troubles may come and the winds may blow, but I need somebody to declare that some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. Have I got one witness? I need somebody that's not ashamed to help me close by waving at somebody and say eyes have not seen. Have I got one witness and ears have not heard? Need a little power right here. Have I got one witness? The kinds of blessings that's about to fall on me. Have I got one witness? Somebody ought to keep their feet out the door. Have I got one witness? Because I realize that God is about to do a new thing. Have I got one witness? And I'm not ashamed to tell somebody that you shouldn't wait till the battle is over. But all to have a witness that's not ashamed to say that we can shout right now. Have I got one witness? Said I won't go act like this today. But it's one thing to know huh, that you did believe but it's a whole nother thing to know huh, that you still believe I might not have a pocket full of money but I'm so glad huh, that I still believe 
that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Is it anybody in this house that's not ashamed to say I might not feel the best in my body, but I'm so glad that I still believe that there's healing in the land. Have I got one witness? Is there anybody in this house that's not ashamed to testify that I still believe because I know for myself that he will keep you from falling, that he will keep you from failing, that he will keep you from troubles, that he will keep you from devilish entanglement, that he will keep you from quitting. Some of y'all acting like you still don't believe, but can you wave at somebody and say, neighbor, I still believe that he still lives. I know it's a week later, but I'm glad to testify that just like Thomas, after I seen him for myself, I got to tell somebody that he still lives, that he still lives. Come on, help me shout a little bit. Is it anybody that can lift their hands and shout hallelujah? Is it anybody that can lift their hands and shout glory? Shucks, I wish we can touch somebody. But if we could touch somebody, I will tell you to grab your neighbor by the hand and squeeze them real tight. They being cute, I like that. Grab your neighbor. If we could, by the hand and squeeze it real tight I will tell you to shake your neighbor shucks y'all gonna make me act like we can do it you should rock them and shake them shake them and rock them rock them and shake them shake them and rock them and say neighbor I still believe because I understand that we've been made and do a fortnight but ain't you glad Joe, ain't you glad? Joe, ain't you glad that trouble don't last always? I got a witness in the house that's not ashamed to lift their hands and say, neighbor, I still believe because this is my story and this is my song. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. Do you love them on the day? Do you love them on the day? Do you love them on the day? Do you love him on the day? Do you love him on the day? Him, my Alpha and Omega. Him, my beginning and the end. Do you love them on the day? If you show enough love them, why don't you lift your hands? If you show enough love them, why don't you wave your hands? If you show enough love them, you shall shout glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah. Listen, listen. I still believe. Come on, standing all over the building. We're done. I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. Wave at somebody and say, neighbor, I still believe. Come on, wave at somebody and say, I still believe. Because he, he showed up for me. Come on, wave at somebody and say, I still believe because he showed up just for me. I still believe. I still believe. Because I was able to see and touch the scars for myself. I still believe because now I'm like one of those angels on earth that will transition one day to glory that can sing a song that the angels up there can't sing. And that's, I know I've been redeemed. I've been brought with a price. Jesus paid it all. I want you to know we still believe because now I'll shout, my shout, 
And when I say that, we're saying it, you know, you can pat yourself on the chest and say, my shout now is in my faith in God. If you're here today, beloved of God, and you don't know who he is, I need you to know, all I'm simply saying is don't you give up on God. As our praise team, such a fitting song as a sermonic selection, don't you give up on God. Because he will not give up on you. It's true. He's still able. He's still able, Jonathan. He's still able. He's still able. He's still able. I want you to know he's, he's still able. Some of you all are trusting God for something to happen this week. To make you run and holler. That he's still God. He still reigns. He's undefeated. Sometimes I need you to know our tests and our trials, yes, they come to make us stronger. There's still no reason for you to give up on God. I know sometimes our faith may waver because that's a part of life. You, you, you will not be telling the truth. I'm being honest. You will not be telling the truth. You would not be telling the truth. You would not be telling the truth. You would not be telling the truth if you declared your faith don't waver. You would not be telling the truth. But I want you to know part of life and part of our process of growing is you will have some tests and some trials. You cannot have a testimony if you're not willing to go through a test. You hear what I'm saying? You cannot, you cannot, you know, nobody, you, you, nobody can, nobody, nobody, nobody want to hear from nobody that, that, that ain't never been through nothing. Not when it's time, not when you're going through something, you know, not when you, not when you, listen, not when you're going through something, you want to hear from folks that didn't been there, done that, because you need the key, you need the answer, you need the antidote, you need it all. For, for yourself and how to get out of what you need to get out of. All right? And so again, let's keep on believing. Let's keep trusting. I know we're living in trying times. We're hearing so much negativity on the news and, and things of that nature. There's just sometimes you got to turn it off. Turn away from CNN. I had, I, had to, I had to force myself, Crystal, to start watching CNN. I had to start watching Martin again. Come on now. I had to I had to watch New Jack City again. So I'm, come on. Come on, come on. Hey Shorty, I'm gonna be honest with you. I got hooked on CNN. I just needed to know. And Miss Spence, I had to de get delivered from it. I had to put oil on my head. I had to block CNN. I had to put a code on it that I would forget. Somehow I still unlocked the code. <laughs> But I want you to know, I need for folks to do wholesome and holistic things that will keep you happy, keep trusting. You know, you got to be some balance in your life. You know, because if the devil, if you give the devil an inch, he'll, he'll listen, he'll, he'll, oh, he'll, he'll take whatever, a mile, whatever you want to say. But you got to know how to put, you know, you got to know how to put them and keep them in check. All right. You got to know how to put them and keep them in check. I want y'all to still believe, not just because I'm telling you to, but I want you to be able to testify this week you still believe because you, because you know him for yourself. He showed up for you. It's cute to hear when the preacher, this, that, and the third, when somebody say, hey, he, he did it for me. But, but it's one thing to really know it from yourself. Tanya, I know you can testify about it. Huh? All of us got a story to tell. And it's your story. And don't you let no devil in hell stop you from telling your story. Because again, somebody one day going to need to see and touch your scars. You know? And I'm going to be mindful in this part right here because I could preach it all day long. You better be careful who you, you better, it better be God led for when you show your scars. I'm just being honest with you because everybody, can, everybody can't see my scars. Everybody can't handle my scars. Because at the end of the day, me and you might come unbenefit. 
you know, because it's, it's just like that. You know, everybody can't handle your scars. So I want to say even in the midst of it, it and there's sometimes you feel like you, it's like jump rope. <clears throat> you, you know how you want to jump in? There's sometimes you just going to stay there because you better, again, be God-led. Because, again, it's not meant for everybody to see your, Jason, not meant for everybody to see your scars. Sister Power is not meant for everybody. Because some people could just take your stuff, mess your, mess your story up. And so again, again, all right? Listen, again, I want you to still believe. I want you to still believe because you could testify yourself that you just saw your scars, that you saw the scars and you touched them for your stuff. But third and final, I want you to be a people now that walks by faith and not by sight. Because that's where your shout going to come. When you know without a shadow of a doubt, you showed up, you went to that car lot, you put that loan, you, you, you trusted that you didn't got your real estate agent, you didn't, you didn't did all you needed to do until you trusted for yourself. You, you know you didn't hurt so many people. Don't it seem like when you're trying to get something and you buy something, the, the devil sent more people that didn't been rejected to you versus send more people that didn't been. I mean, I mean for real. Am I right? I like it. Since I like you, you're gonna be my new best friend. She said, You preacher. Preacher, you know, I like people talk back to the preacher, but I want you to know at the end of the day, it, it makes a whole lot of difference when you didn't been rejected, 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 but you keep on filling it out, you keep on trusting, and it makes a whole lot of difference when somebody named Jason come and say, You know what? If you give me two more dollars, we can make it work, huh? Listen, 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 you, you ever been. Listen, don't testify because I don't want nobody to know you see your scars because they can't handle it. But you just didn't been, you didn't, you know people that didn't been to the dealership. You know you ain't had no business even think about going to the dealership. You ain't had no business even showing up at the dealership. But for some strange reason, you pulled up to church the next day, you just got a new car and you tell a pastor and everybody see you pulling up. I don't know how he did it, he just did it. Come on, help me if you will, y'all. So again, God is looking for. Your faith to be worked in this season. Faith without work is dead. Listen, I'm done. If you're, if you're here, you don't know who he is, you want to come, four calls, and I'm done. If you don't know who he is, come. If you're looking for a church home, come. If you're looking to rededicate your life back to Christ, come. If you need prayer, we're going to pray for you in a moment, all right? Listen, if you don't know who he is, it's not about joining church. It's about joining the body of Christ. It's about joining the body of Christ. It's about joining the body of Christ. If, if, if you're looking for a church home, as I so often say, we're not a perfect church, but we follow a perfect God. And I want you to know this is a church where you can go and grow and not just go to go. All right? We're kingdom living, kingdom building, doing our very best to become better people. If you want to come, you need to rededicate your life back to Christ. It's simple. I often tell people there's nothing wrong with making sure your assurance mm -hmm. is reassured. And if that's you, you need to come. All right? Fourth and final call. I hear you saying, Reb, I know who he is. I'm excited about my church. I think my church is doing a great job in this season. I'm glad to be connected with several other churches. I feel like I'm a part of the body of Christ. I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my churches. Hey, you know how it goes. All right? I'm, I'm sure about my reassurance. All right? But how many know that, listen, as off as we gather, the Bible says this, that man ought to always pray. All right? And so how many know that prayer changes things? If you know, look at, look at the scars that know that prayer does change things. Look at the faith. So again, I'm going to pray for you in a moment, but I'm a fan of this moment right here. You're on good ground. You're on holy ground. Take a moment for yourself and begin to pray for yourself. I won't pray for you in a moment, but I want you to take this moment. I want you to take this very moment and whisper prayer for yourself. You know better. You know exactly what you need God to do. Come on, take this moment. Take about a minute or two and pray. Take about a minute or two and pray. For we trust in our God And through his unfailing love We will not be shaken We will not be shaken We will not be shaken Yeah, yeah For we trust in our God 
and through his unfailing love said we will not be shamed come on talk to him 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 we will not be shaken talk to him for we trust in our God and through his unfailing come on talk to him talk to him talk to him we will not be shaken we will not be shaken be shaken, no, no. For we trust in our God, yeah. And through His unfailing love, talk to Him. Said we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For we trust in our Thank you for the prayers that have been offered up to you. Pray God now that you would hear that man's prayer, hear that boy's prayer, hear that woman's prayer, hear that girl's prayer. God, I pray that you would answer every prayer that has been offered up unto you. As long as it's according to your will, as long as it's according to your ways, and more than anything, as long as it's according to your word, God, we say in advance, as we're walking by faith, we're trusting by faith, that ways are already made, bodies are already healed, bills are already met, Doors are already open. So God, as we offer prayers up to you, I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for your way being made. Thank you, God, for your door being open. Thank you, God, for your body being healed. Thank you, God, for the mortgage that's met. Thank you, God, for the bills that's paid. Hallelujah, God. We declare it done, and we declare it so. So God, I pray now as we leave this place, never from your presence. I pray, God, this week that we will be met with your love. We'll be met with your grace. We'll be met with your favor. Every place we step foot in, we say, God, have thine own way this week. And I say to you, to God, be the glory for the great things that you're getting ready to do. So God bless us like only you know how. I love you, we love you, and God, I pray that you guide us all week long. Meet us here on Wednesday as we open our church once again to the community, that we will be a light in a dark place for your glory. God, then to keep us all week long, on our various jobs, doctor's appointments, highways and byways of life for your glory. And then to God, I pray that you would meet us here on next Sunday as we lift our hands one more time to give you glory. 
For it is in your name, God, we do pray. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest through in the body henceforth now and forevermore. And all together as one family, we say amen, amen, and amen. Y'all go in peace. I'll see y'all this week.